Okay, hello and welcome everyone uh, to Wednesday's Weekly. This is your bite-sized briefing, a collaboration between Action Together, the voluntary community faith sector and the public sector. Um, I'm really pleased to welcome you all this morning to this, the third episode in our new Cost of Living Crisis series. Action Together are working with Oldham Council to welcome you every Wednesday between now and next March to hear from the services and organisations that are working alongside you in Oldham delivering critical help to support Oldham residents through the cost of living crisis. Without further ado, really, really pleased to hand you over to Kath Taylor and to Michelle Mills, who will be taking us from here. Thanks, Laura. Good morning, everybody. Um, so as Laura said, my name's Kath Taylor. I'm the uh, partnership manager for Oldham Job Centre. Um, and I'm accompanied today with Michelle Mills, who's one of our two supporting family employment advisors uh, at the job centre as well. Um, yeah. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about my role as partnership manager, at, uh, first of all. Uh, so part of my job role, um, I work collaboratively internally and externally with um, stakeholders. Uh, building relationships with partners and it's all in a view to uh, making improvements for our customers. The customer is always at the heart of our business so anything we can do to bring in um, improvement me measures um, for customers to move them forward closer to employment that's what my role is about. Um, I also make sure that there's a single point of contact in place uh, to support our site's complex needs plan um, so that's in, in, for example, we've just, um, we've just sort of welcomed the Afghan um, UK arrivals in August 21 uh, and I've implemented a single point of contact for uh, Afghan citizens and the Ukraine citizens in the job centre. So that's just an example, but we do have a single point of contact for every subject. Uh, I engage with partners. Um, looking at funding and how we can work together uh, to utilise DWP funding for various initiatives. Um, we have the offer of the uh, flexible support fund that we can support customers with, and this can be anything from childcare support for customers returning to work. It could be bus fares, interview clothing. Uh, the list is endless, really, in terms of what we can do through the flexible support fund, uh, IT digital support as well. Um, I bring partners in um, to discuss their offer of support. So, for example, Changing Futures has been the latest initiative for Oldham, and we're in the process of bringing that those um, support workers into the job centre to discuss their support offer for our uh, work coaches to understand uh, their tailored delivery of support. Uh, I work with partners to address gaps and shortfalls in partnership to support customer caseloads. So again, um, our work coaches work closely to understand uh, their um, customers on their caseload, what the makeup of those customers are and how best we can support them through our partnership. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah. Um, so we strive to understand the impact of universal credit on our partnership organisations. So we understand that universal credit is an agile system. Uh, it changes all the time. We have uh, lots of updates that, are, that come in. Um, obviously, the cost of living crisis at the moment, uh, we've just paid um, some uh, support for the cost of living payment. The latest one's being paid between the 8th of November and the 23rd of November to our customers, and the latest one is £324. So again, it's just getting those messages out to our partners to understand universal credit and what is happening now uh, for our customers. So we're always willing to explore new ways of working and working with a few of our partners at the moment. I'm proud to say our latest one is the volunteering project that I'm working on. Uh, with Action Together, and that's going to be a really good way of um, motivating our customers uh, following the pandemic, making sure that they're supported and giving them um, a taster into the world of working again and giving them that confidence back to move forward. Uh, and, I, and the 
last one, which shouldn't re really be the last one, is about escalations from partnership organisations. So I work very closely with our landlords um, and, you know, usually I get queries when things have gone wrong, unfortunately. So I'm always unpicking queries and responding to those issues with a view to, um, you know, putting that right and making sure that the customer is being supported at all times as well as the partner. Um, yeah, thank you. So Job Centre Plus Delivery. So um, <clears throat> during the pandemic, we recruited, um, I think, over 100 new uh, work coaches to Oldham. Um, and during that period, we was over three sites in Oldham. So there was the main job centre, which is obviously still there. And then we've got the Phoenix House building across the road, which is due to shut in March 23. Um, and we've got our temporary pop-up job centre, as they call them, um, which is our temporary site over at um, the university site, Oldham University. Um, so... Phoenix House, like I said, is closing and the staff are moving over to the business centre in the next couple of weeks. Um, so Phoenix House will not be utilised by a job centre from that from that uh, from March 23. Uh, we've seen co-location sites in 10 of the local authorities. Um, and because we've recruited so many staff, I, I don't see them sort of um, reducing in the near future. Um, we prior the priority is our youth unemployed. We recognise that youth in unemployment is quite high at the moment. So um, obviously we were supporting them originally through the use of Kickstart, but Kickstart has now uh, ended uh, and Ways to Work has come in. Ways to Work is basically um, just utilising, I don't know why the light's gone up. Um, ways to Work um, is just utilising a, a, a raft of provision that's available for our young people. We've never had so much um, provision that's on offer for our young people. So again, it's working with our partners to support those young people. We have a youth hub in Oldham through Get Oldham Working as well. And we have a youth hub work coach who works out of Get Oldham Working. He's got a fantastic relationship with the staff in the, in the Get Oldham Working, working collaboratively using that holistic model. Um, we have job centre specialist roles as well uh, that offer a bespoke offer. Uh, we have four disability employment advisors at Oldham. We have two supporting families employment advisors and Michelle's on the call with me today and she'll talk through her role in a second. We have um, four employment advisors who work really, really closely with employers, generating um, more opportunity for people, bringing employers in through the use of our monthly jobs fairs that are at the moment at the library. Um, we've had fantastic feedback. The chief executive of Oldham Council came to visit our jobs fair back in August 22, and he was amazed at the support that's available for our customers in Oldham. So we're really proud of those jobs fairs. We have four youth employment coaches. So they work very, very closely with um, Oldham um, aftercare team. Um, and they have a really good relationship supporting those young people who um, have got chaotic lives, uh, who are disengaging at all times. So they work together to try and engage those young people um, and move try and move them forward it, although it's very challenging and they do try and move them forward as best as they can and i've just touched on the youth hub work coach so working together with stakeholders with the job spares um and i attend a lot of strategic planning meetings with a view to improvement me measures as well okay so i can't tell you how many work coaches we currently have but we have lots <laughs> um i'd say we have probably around i'll just pick a number out i reckon of at least 90 and that's probably underselling how many work coaches we do have at oldham at the moment um and the role of the work coach basically is to support customers moving closer to the labor market employment is um the the aim uh, the end goal of every customer, but we do recognise that, you know, uh, they're all on their own individual journey and the work coach's job is to tailor that um, 
that um, support um, to provide um, whatever it is that that customer needs specifically to move forward. And that's why this volunteering opportunity that I'm working with, with Action Together is gonna to be absolutely fantastic in supporting that customer's journey to move forward. Um, the the uh, assigned posting um, facility as well. So if the work coach identifies a barrier, they will signpost to the relevant organization. They help people to access the right appropriate benefits. So if they're not claiming a specific benefit, um, following discussion, they will support and refer, for example, to PIT or if the children need DLA, they'll, um, they'll discuss and support where appropriate as well. They will help people to get the support that they need. So again, using financial assistance such as FSF, um, they, they do have time bound appointments, but they do have flexible um, interventions that they can use. So that could be ranging from a 10 minute appointment to up to a 30 minute appointment and they can use those appointment times at their discretion. So what to expect from your work coach? So like I said, individual tailored support is what they're looking to do. Um, we're, we're, we're doing a, a huge thing at the moment where Michelle and her colleague Joanne uh, are upskilling the work coaches to offer in-work benefit calculations for our customers, uh, recognizing that they do need to have a good understanding of how much they will be better off in work. So we're doing that big push at the moment because when a customer knows that they'll be better off in work, it does motivate them to start looking um, and, and really wanting to get back into employment. Um, they signpost internally and externally. So again, they'll refer to jobs fairs. They might refer to the disability employment advisor for support. They'll look to the colleagues for case conferencing. So if they've got a particular difficult case, a difficult customer, they're not really sure how to support them. They can use internal colleagues um, to case conference with, with them and discuss how, how best to move that customer forward. Um, work coaches, you know, we're, we're striving to be non-judgmental. We want honesty. We want customers to be open up and be honest and communicate the situation with us. Once we know the full picture of a customer's circumstances, they can support in the most appropriate way. And being prepared to listen is the other thing as well that they do. I'm going to pass you over to Michelle now, and she's going to discuss um, and talk to you about the role of the Sporting Families Employment Advisor. Morning, everybody. So I'm Michelle. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be talking, talking through my role and then I'm going to move on to what support's available um, via provision that we can offer customers. So my role is the Supporting Families Employment Advisor. Um, there's me and Joanne who deliver this role in Oldham. Um, but there is an equivalent in every um, job centre in the UK. Um, the programme started out as like the Troubled Families uh, programme, which you've probably heard of that started in David Cameron's government. And it's basically to support um, vulnerable families, help them um, you know, to move forward into work, hopefully eventually, um, and or they can uh, be put forward for training to get them more ready for work. So I work in partnership with the local authority um, and it's the Family Connect team at Oldham Council um, where I receive referrals of families that wanted support. Um, so I prov provide tailored support to these uh, individuals and families it is, who have got uh, who are vulnerable and have complex barriers uh, to overcome. I'm in it, work in addition um, to the work coach, to what Cass just talked about, so I can offer more time um, so there's no there's no time limit i can spend as long as necessary with the customer um, and my service is voluntary as well so there's if they don't attend there's no no consequences um the flexible i don't i'm not ba well i am based in a job center but not full time i'm more out in the community so i can meet customers wherever they is convenient for them um, but most of my interviews are conducted at positive steps um, so they used to, used to attend in there uh, because the Family Connect teams are, are based there as well. 
um, and it's a nice environment. So I tend to see people in, in positive steps on a day that's convenient for them. Um, I do case conference, conferencing internally with um, the Job Centre work coaches, especially the youth uh, work coaches. I do case conference with them every two weeks, but also externally with the Family Connect teams. So we discuss cases together and how best to support our customers. And also a big part of my role is upskilling partners um, on welfare reform and policies that are changing. Um, and I've got excellent relationships with all the Family Connect teams. The purpose of the supporting families role is to act as a conduit between uh, DWP and the LA. Um, so, you know, so if there's any issues or anything, um, I, can, I can support with that. So if there's an issue with a customer, I can speak to the work coach and put them in the picture of what's going on with that family. Um, and it's important that we have the work is good for you conversation early. Um, so again, as Kath was saying, you know, making families aware of the benefits of working, um, not only financially, but for the, the well-being as well. Um, you know, so that's, that's the main purpose of, of my role. And how I support my customers, um, it's very similar to what a work coach does, but as I said, I've got more time to spend. And this is just a few of the things that I can offer. So it's advice, advice on the labour market, what jobs are out there, uh, what sectors are the main sectors at the moment, what kind of transferable skills that they might have used in the previous job, um, careers advice, obviously job search support, um, looking at CVs, interview support, actually applying for jobs and this is a big one referrals onto training courses so getting getting new skills um, like IT skills basic skills maths and English and then we have a lot of specialist courses that we can refer to um, that lead to directly into work such as teacher training and um, care which is a massive sector at the moment and construction and uh, I can also set up emails for people, help them register on job sites, advice on the effects of benefits if they work, if they're going to work. Um, and then confidence building, that's a big one as well. You know, customers, they don't feel like they've, they've got anything to offer. So we, we put them on courses that can build them up and see that they have got something to offer. Um, and then work placement, ex work experience placements, volunteering is a massive one as well. Um, to get them, you know, thinking about what, what they could offer. And then the specialist provision, which I'm going to talk about in more detail at the moment, uh, in a minute. So we, it's tailored to whatever the customer needs. Um, and as I said, we can spend as long as, as necessary. And I can see them as often as possible. Uh, so, yeah, moving on now to what's on offer. So at the moment, we've um, got a 50 plus choices offer because we recognise that this group of people need a lot of support as well. Uh, they might be um, affected by redundancies. And what the 50 plus choices offer is, is um, additional work coach time to spend with this. This is for the work coach to do. Just extra time to um, get them to think about, you know, transferable skills that they might have. Because, you know, there's a long time till they, they retire. So they've got a long working life ahead of them. So it's all about getting them to think what else they could do and what other work they could do. The um, 50 plus choices offer has been live since May. And we've got a district 50 plus champion, Vicky Boylan, who will talk to employers and educate them on taking on older workers. Um, and as I said, we, we, consider, we encourage them to consider like volunteering as well to identify these transferable skills that they might have. Um, another thing that we've got is the Work and Health Programme, and this has been available for a number of years. And it's a 15-month programme to get people ready for work. Um, and it's designed for people who have got a health condition or who are long-term unemployed. And the aim is to get them in work within the 15 months. And then they also get an additional six months in work support, which is really good, you know, because often people fall out of work. But if they've got the in work support, we can put things in place and make sure that doesn't happen. 
Um, it's tailored again to each individual participant and they look at uh, the physical and mental health as well. And um, the people who run it are in work GM and they have health professionals who can advise on um, health management and also signposting for treatments as well. And they get a full range of, sorry, not glory. They get a full range of support, including looking at the health, looking at their employability, but also specialist support such as debts and housing, which you know prevents people from moving into work. Okay. Um, another program that we're running at the moment is Restart. And this was brought in as a result of the um, economic recovery to, to deal with that and to provide customers who have been unemployed for nine months or more with intensive support for up to 12 months. Again, it's um, delivered, you know, um, tailored to the customer. And it's a mixture of digital and face-to-face -face support. And this program, we have a lot of close working relationships with the work coaches and the restart advisors to give the customer the best experience. Okay. Okay, thank you for listening. Um, I'll hand over to Laura now for any questions. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for joining and um, big huge thank you to everyone who's joined this morning <clears throat> taking that time out we know how precious our time is at the moment and a huge thank you to to Kath and Michelle for coming and and talking through um the offer from the DWP and Job Centre Plus really really useful information so um, and making those connections so thanks all and I hope to see you again soon thank, thank you. you thank you, yeah, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.